Hi, and welcome to VFX Tutors. In this video, I'll be going through how to remove your tripod from your HDRI. Okay, so I've opened Photoshop. And the reason why I'm using Photoshop is probably because most people have this, but you can use pretty much any other image editing software like Nuke, Neutron, or GIMP, or pretty much anything that you've got, as long as we can edit 32-bit EXRs and we've got a channel mixer. So I'll just open up my uh, HDRI that I've just exported. So I'll go File, Open. And you'll have your LDR, which is just your JPEG. It's just a preview. You would never use that for lighting. It's just so you can see what's on. So we'll select our EXR, select Open. Then we'll leave Alpha as Transparency. So now we can see where we've got our HDRI in. And we can sort of look around. We can see we've got some slight stitching problems here, but I'm not really that bothered about it. It's so small, you'd never notice. And we've got a black bit at the bottom, which we painted out. And what we can do, we can just go up to our image, select adjustments, and we can go to exposure. And we can just see how much dynamic range we have in this shot now. So we can just select exposure. And you see how the light source is now only coming from the sun. Everything's underexposing. And now we only have the sun. And we can just about see it. So I guess we've got about 14 stops on this HDR. Actually, 14 in the minus. And I guess 9. It's also like 22, maybe 20, 25 exposure values. And that's pretty good. So if you wanted, you could take this straight into your 3D software and use it straight away. It's not a problem. You'll have the sun in there. Um, the only problem is that the luminosity may be coming from the sky as well, because you only want your light to be coming from the sun. And if we just do a luminosity check on our sun, which is if we just go to channels, we just can, can hold control and left click on RGB. It's actually pretty good. Because we've done 12 exposures, it's all the lights coming from here. So I would expect if we brought this into 3D now, it'd work really well straight away. So that seems to be pretty good because all our luminosity is coming from the sun. If we didn't, and it might be spreading out and getting more of this sky, and you'll get more bounce light than direct light, then that's when we want to sort of start fixing our sun. But let's just start with sorting out this black patch at the bottom. So we can go file, uh, select, deselect that. What I'll do, I'll just duplicate my background. So I'll right click, duplicate layer, OK. Then I'll just turn that off, so I just can keep that as a backup. So now I'll make a new layer. And I'll call it the dear fix, which is the bottom of our sphere. So I can't. Di I don't think I can directly use my clone stamp on this straight away because this is what we're going to use. Yeah, I can actually. So I'm going to select my background copy, and I'm going to go to my clone stamp, put my opacity all the way up to 100%. I'll put my hardness around 50. Just make it a little bit bigger so I can sample as much of the ground, because the, the smaller the size of your uh, clone stamp, the more patchy it'll look, but it will mean that you'll have to change it more often. So I'm actually going to go about 2, 4, 3, because it should be fine. So I'm going to zoom out. In fact, I'm just going to press Alt and left click. And now that's sampled that area. So now if I zoom out, so now I'll sample that area on my background copy, then I'll go to my Nadir Fix layer, and now I can start painting. I'm not painting on the HDR, I'm just painting on that top layer. So you need to be quite careful where you're painting, because if you start painting more down, you will start to um, go to the edge of your original. So you need to make sure that you keep above here. See how we've painted that now. And we'll just go, keep going back and forth from our background copy. Twana dear fix. And we'll just try and get this top layer. 
And I guess it's up to you whether if you want to keep this Macbeth chart in or not. It's kind of, that's my fault. That was a very poor placement of it. Um, we're going to do a manual grade on this later anyway, so um, we can get rid of it. Let's just get rid of it. It's fine. But if it was in a better place, we could probably use it. It has some quite good color reference. But um, yeah, I seem to have messed up there. Sorry. So we'll just keep going back from background copy to our layer. I'm just going to paint out. And as you can see, you can sort of see it's not looking great. Don't worry about it. We're never going to really notice it. It's more just to get rid of the black. But I'm just doing it very quickly. If you want to take more time doing it nicer, that's fine. But um, at this level, I, I kind of know that you're never going to notice it anyway. Just clone stamping as much as I can. You can. See, we've covered it quite well. So, what I'll also do now, I'll just go to my size, bring it up a bit, bring my hardness down. I'll just change my opacity a little bit. Then I'm going to sample another area. And I'm just going to go over these sort of. You can sort of see these like lines where I've just poorly painted over it. And what this does is just sort of does a really rough rough blend over the top. Like I say, it's not perfect, but you're never going to notice, I don't think. But if you want it to be perfect, more than welcome to spend way more time on it if you like. I just want to do it quick and uh, get it into a 3D as fast as possible. So now I can actually start, if I turn my background copy off, I can see what I've done. It looks gross, but um, you might not even notice. We've still got a little bit of black down here, so uh, change our opacity back up. Sample that area, just paint it out. Oh, undo that. So you need to make sure that we always so I'm going to bring my hardness up a little bit as we're coming up to this sharp shadow. Yeah, we've got rid of it. You can see we've got a really horrible circle there now because our hardness is quite hard. So we'll just change our opacity down and we'll do that. So fix that there. Blend it in. Like I say, it's, not, it's not perfect. It's a bit blobbery, but let's not worry too much. So I'm going to select, go back to my background copy, select this sun part. I'm going to change my hardness a little bit. Put my opacity back up. I'm just going to sort this little edge because it looks like it curves around. So I'll just get rid of that tripod shadow. It doesn't have to be perfect. God, so we've got a rough sort of shadow line there. And we can just go to our continue fixing this bit here. You can see we've sort of, sort of some tonal changes here, so we'll start sampling from this side. Just keep going back and forth from our background copy, getting our clone stamp sample from there. So, if we turn this off, we can see what we've painted. We can see we've got some tone changes here, so you can sort of see it here as well. So, let's sample this. Sample that, sorry. Change our opacity to like low. Make our brush a little bit softer. Ooh, 
make sure you're on the right layer. And we can sort of blend it in. Make sure you're on the right layer. And we'll just blend it both ways. And we see what fixed it. And it's not perfect, but we don't have a tripod in there now. So you can probably save that now. So I'll just go to File, Save As. I've already got my file saved here, so I'll just go to my Photoshop, change it to Open EXR, and we have our stitched HDRI. Then we'll change it to stitched no tripod. Video one. We'll click save. And we'll leave our compression as none. You can add it if you want, if it's too much of a large file. But um, for now, we'll just leave it as zero compression. And now we're done. We've we've um, brought in our HDRI. We've checked it. We've done a pretty rough paint out of the tripod. It's, it's no fine art or anything like that. But it's it's you would never really notice it unless you're, say, rendering a giant chrome sphere and that was your project. But I don't think you would ever really notice it. So our next step would be to prepare maybe, let's say the, they want to actually just do a CG sun. So we want to remove the sun. So in our next step, we'll go through and how to remove the sun from our HDRI. So if you guys enjoyed this tutorial, hit that like button and subscribe for more like this.